I just went hands-on with Apple's Vision Pro virtual reality headset for 30 minutes, and I walked away very impressed with the experience. It builds on established virtual reality technologies in a very meaningful, interesting way. Let's get into it. So one of the things that you have to do before you actually put on the headset is Apple scanned the front of my face and the side of my face with an iPhone. It was kind of like the AirPods Pro set up spatial audio process in some ways. And that makes you make sure you have the right fit for the headset. Um, and there's different band sizes. I think I ended up with a medium one, but they do that to make sure that there's not a lot of light bleed around your face and that it fits properly. I really like the look of the headset. Like, you're never gonna look cool when you're wearing a virtual reality headset. It, it looks strange, they all look weird. But Apple's has a very specific aesthetic is how I would describe it. It's kind of like this weird cyberpunk thing. And what we saw during the keynote doesn't really do it justice. When you see it in person, it looks far cooler than it does in video or photos. The headset was also extremely comfortable. It didn't feel like there was something on my face, at least for the first, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes that I had it on. The demo lasted 30 minutes, so towards the end of it, it did start to feel very heavy and front weighted. And that's because it's not plastic. It's not plastic like what other manufacturers have gone with for their VR headsets. It's some sort of metal and it really feels like the AirPods Max in some ways. Um, and, and that's why it's far heavier. And then the other thing that's worth noting is that uh, along with the adjustment strap that goes around the back of your head with a little dial, there's an additional strap that wasn't shown off during the keynote. And that goes from the back of your head to, your, to the front of your head. And it kind of just pops off and you can tighten it and loosen it. And I felt that that strap really made the headset sit more snugly on my head. And it was something that I was concerned about when I first saw photos of the Vision uh, Pro, just because it looks like it would slide down this prevented that from happening entirely and it made it fit really snugly, though there was still a little bit of light bleed kind of under my eyes. There's also a lot of subtle Apple-like touches, like the digital crown that I'll talk a little bit about later. It has like a texture to it. The back strap has a neat texture to it as well. It feels like an Apple product. Like there's a lot of care and thought has gone into the design and the look. And then I think it's also important to note that during my particular demo, and I know we saw this during the keynote and it did look very cool, if not a little dystopian in some ways, was the front uh, facing display that shows your eyes when you're wearing the headset. I didn't see that in action during the demo. I don't even know if it was present or if it was working. I kind of got the vibe that like Apple's still working on it and it's not ready to show it off to the media or influencers or YouTubers yet, but that it's something they plan to include in the final version of the device. But during my time with the headset, I unfortunately didn't get to see that aspect of it in action. So I also didn't get an opportunity to make a persona, the sort of virtual reality version of yourself that Apple showed off during the keynote. And I think that that's tied to the front facing screen and your eyes. So because I couldn't make the persona, I couldn't use that feature. That said, I was able to do a FaceTime call to someone else who had created a persona. That was really cool, but it was also kind of off-putting because the weird, kind of almost uncanny valley nature of these personas really came out during that brief call. It kind of looked real, but almost not real, like a video game that looked almost like it was real life, but not quite. But it was still an interesting experience and something that I haven't encountered before in virtual reality. So I wanna talk about some of the specifics that make the Vision Pro better than any VR headset I've personally ever used before. First, there's the digital crown. It's kind of located on the side of the Pro. And the way that it works is you spin it and you're kind of, you're in a virtual space, like say you're doing some sort of dinosaur experience or something like that. That's one of the demos that I actually tried. You spin it and the whole thing becomes like this prehistoric landscape. But then as you continue to move it, the real world shows up in front of you again. So in this case, it was the office that I was sitting in. And this is something that I haven't really seen before with a virtual reality headset. And it helps you kind of also link the virtual world to the real world. So say someone walked in your room and you needed to speak to them and you were watching a movie or something like that, you just spin the dial and they show up like right beside the movie that you're watching. 
It's a nice, very interesting touch that's very Apple-like that I haven't seen from another manufacturer. And how you actually navigate with the headset, it's by far my favorite that I've seen. So in terms of actually interacting with apps, it's all through tracking your eye movement. So if I looked at an icon, um, you would instantly see it light up. And then if I looked at another icon, you would see that light up. And then the way that you click, uh, sort of like mouse concept with, with the Vision Pro, is you make this little movement like this. You just like close your fingers. It's really awkward at first and it's weird and it took me a while to get the hang of. And what I was doing was I would like reach towards like icons on the screen. And obviously I didn't need to do that. The person who was doing the demo explained that like I could have my hand like way over here and the Vision Pro would still, still acknowledge that action. And admittedly like once I figured it out, I caught on and it became very, very intuitive. I would describe it as the most natural way of interacting with pretty much any tech device I've ever experienced. Like within five minutes, I was pinching things and swiping and, and moving all over the place. But on the other side of the spectrum with that, there's no tactile feedback. Uh, there's no controllers, which I think will create some problems in the gaming space. And that might be why Apple hasn't shown off really any games on the platform quite yet. But that's not the audience that I, I really think that Apple's going after with the Vision Pro, but it's still worth mentioning. Just to be clear, you can still connect your Xbox Series X controller or PlayStation 5 controller to the Vision Pro. I'm just strictly talking about like motion-based VR controllers that you would get with like the Vive or the Oculus, that kind of thing. And the key thing that I really, really think makes the Vision Pro better than any headset that I've used is the fact that the display doesn't feature that screen door effect that I'm used to seeing with VR headsets where you can actually see the individual pixels. With the Vision Pro and Apple's new headset, it's it's incredibly clear. Like you, you can see them, but you have to like really, really, really look. And to me, that's probably the most exciting aspect of the headset because when I got into some of the experiences that Apple had prepared, like watching a clip of Avatar in 3D or like these little demos, that made me think that like, I would actually sit down and watch a movie in virtual reality. And I've never been able to say that before because that screen door effect is so apparent. It kind of ruins the viewing experience. With this, it was almost the same as watching a movie on like a really big flat screen in, in your house or something like that. And that's totally new to me, at least in the VR space. And then the other thing that I think is part of that is the refresh rate. We don't know what the refresh rate of the display in the headset is. I'm assuming it's variable. We, we did kind of get that confirmation from Apple, but they didn't give us a specific number. My guess is it's going from like zero to 120. It's, it's, it's all over the place, but it really helps to make the movement and everything that you're watching seem far more fluid. And I think that's a shortcoming of a lot of other existing headsets. One of the issues that I've had with VR in the past is when they lack when a headset lacks room scale, I sometimes get motion sick. That didn't happen to me during my brief 30 minutes with the Vision Pro. And I think some of that might be tied to the fact that it has a very high refresh rate and all of the movement, at least in the demos that I experienced, is extremely lifelike and, and fluid. I also wanna talk about some of the apps that I tried out on the Vision Pro. A lot of them were just pulled directly from the iPhone. You have the Notes app, you have Freeform, you have stuff like Photos. They all have like this very specific look and VR feel to them, but they're not different. It's the same apps that you've used on the iPhone just pulled on to this device. Like there's a way to make photos and in, in the Photos app look full screen. It was, it was neat, but there wasn't that like killer app that like really sells me on what Apple's doing with the Vision Pro. There's a couple of specific experiences that I wanna highlight. And I, I should also mention that a lot of this is very similar to what I've experienced with other headset demos or play around with on other headsets, even dating all the way back to the Gear VR. Though what Apple's doing is obviously like, it has much, much higher fidelity and it looks way better. So one was like a 3D Avatar 2 experience. That looked really, really cool. And I kind of wanted to sit there and watch the entire video. Unfortunately, it was like 30 seconds long or something like that. That's CanCon, baby. <laughs> it looked really cool. I enjoyed it. Uh, there was also a, like a dinosaur experience where there was a, like a, a dinosaur coming out of the wall. That was kind of neat. And within that, there was probably my favorite moment of the demo. 
Um, the Apple person asked me to hold out my hand. I held it out and a butterfly flew out from this like dinosaur exhibit and landed on my fingers. And I was able to like turn my finger and the butterfly was still attached to my finger. And that speaks to the like cool hand detection stuff that Apple's doing with the Vision Pro. And what I would say too, is like, it's the first time that I've ever been in VR and it like, it kind of had, there's like a little bit of sensory trickery. Like I actually felt like I could feel the butterfly on my hand. That was really exciting. And I've never ever seen something like that before or experienced something like that before with a VR headset. So not only is like controlling apps and moving windows around really smart and intuitive, you can also have multiple windows running at once. So at one point I had like an app over here, I had an app in front of me and I had an app on the right side. I, I could really see someone like working within that space and kind of multitasking in a very physical way that hasn't been possible until the advent of VR. And I know we've seen this before, like we've seen it with the Oculus Quest, there's like the ability to make multiple windows, but the way that Apple's doing it is very specific to the company's design language. And it's far more intuitive than anything that I've experienced before with a VR headset. One thing I also want to note is the virtual shadows under these windows were really, really impressive. It's not something I noticed in the keynote when I watched it, but during the actual demo experience, it just gives it like everything, the whole home screen, this very cohesive Apple-like look to it. And it makes it feel like even though it's a virtual object, it's planted in the real world in a way that I haven't seen before with other VR headsets. And it's another example of like, yes, we've seen VR headsets before, but Apple has this different take on it that is very, very intrinsically tied to their design language and what the company's been all about for the last several decades. Then there's the elephant in the room that I think I need to address. The Vision Pro costs 3,000 499 US dollars. We don't know the Canadian price. We don't even know when it's coming here. It's coming to the US next year. We'll probably get it the year after in Canada or something like that. But we think it's gonna cost maybe $5,000, but with direct conversion right now, it's 4,700. So this is an extremely expensive product and it's a very, like, it, it's one of the most expensive things that I have ever seen any company release. And it almost makes me feel like Apple doesn't want it to be widely adopted. And I do think that that's somewhat the case with the Vision Pro. This is a first gen product. It's being shown off at WWDC for a very specific reason. Apple wants to get developers excited about it. It wants to get the general public like a little bit excited about it, but it really wants the developers to start to care about it, work on apps for it, come up with that killer app that doesn't quite exist yet. That's going to really, really sell it to people when future iterations come out that are cheaper, smaller, faster, et cetera. But we're not at that point yet. This is just Apple really starting this process. And that's it. We have a ton more WWDC news on mobilesurf.com. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to check out Brad Bennett's Tech Effect project. There's a lot of great content on there and we'll have more episodes coming in the future. Thanks for watching.